out of a sticky situation. I can see my notes over there. Where are your notes? There is, look. Just this one I gave you. And the other hand. <laughs> Caprice is speechless, so Jess steps in. Do you check your tills regularly? Yeah, and I check the notes every single note that comes in. Well, then how come you've just given her those then? Well, this is not my notes, I don't care. So I'm not going to give you a change. For the first time in real hustle history, a scam is about to end in disaster. Caprice is in danger of getting herself arrested. Acting quickly, Jess leaves to get Alex and Paul. Is she leaving? <clears throat> I don't know. Huh? She's might with you, I don't know. Quickly devising an off-the-cuff rescue plan, the boys make their entrance. Gwyneth, please. Young lady, try and buy anything in yeah. here a few minutes ago. That's the one just there. A quick flash of their wallets is enough to convince the shopkeeper that they're the police. It's English to me. The shopkeeper points out Caprice, so Paul pretends to deal with her. The hustlers have taken control of the situation. This lady try and pass counterfeit money. Is this your money? That's right. That's yeah. your money? Yeah. This is real. So that's the 50 pounds he gave me. Yeah, that's counterfeit too. Paul then throws a spanner in the works. Apparently, the 50 that Caprice used is counterfeit as well. But nothing's got past this lady yet. I've got the pen there if you want me to scrap that. No, it's, yeah, it's fine. Those pens are not really And I've got one more 50. Yeah, we're going to have a look at the 50 outside with the, uh, with the proper scope. I've got the with pen the... here. Those are not as reliable as the ones that we have in our car, in our patrol car. To Caprice's relief, she's out of the shop for good, and the boys have got her £50 back, as well as the genuine £40 she received in change. It's not how they planned it, but they've got exactly what they wanted. Reassuring the shopkeeper that he'll come back with her money, Alex exits the shop never to return. Not only have they saved Caprice's bacon, but they've turned a disastrous scam into a success. I froze. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know how con artists keep it together. I was. I was so scared. I thought, oh my goodness, what did I just tell her here? These are yours. Here, take it, and then run out. I just wanted to run out. And then the guys came in. Thank God, the guys came in. Two men was came in and said, oh, we're just looking for the girls passing the dodgy knots. He took the fifty pound. He said, I'm going outside and checking the knots again. Then when I look outside, nobody's there. To be so calm and to think on your feet like that is unbelievable. Oh, I feel sick. Still to come. Is there a problem? Gentlemen? PC Alex finds some trouble on his beat. We'll sort this out. And today becomes this woman's worst nightmare. I think someone's going to pinch me in a moment and I'm going to wake up. This shifty character is looking a bit worse for wear. He could clearly do with some warmth and a hot drink. Luckily for him, he's found a perfect spot and enough money for a brew. Oh, a cup of tea, please. But this is not just some scruffy fella looking for shelter. He might seem skint now, but soon it'll be champagne and not tea he'll be ordering. This is the coffee fix. Although Paul has his nose in a newspaper, he's keeping an eye on the cafe's customers. And as two of them get up to pay, Paul starts to pay close attention. As they exit, Paul decides to do the same. The scam is on. Excuse me, did you take my money out my pocket? You were sitting behind me in there, yeah? I had stuff written on it. Have you got my money? The Marks have found themselves in a difficult situation. Confronted by such an aggressive character, they could do with some assistance. Luckily, a friendly copper is on hand. I had money in this pocket, and you were sitting right behind me. You know you were. Is there a problem? Gentlemen? These guys took my money. I had money in my pocket. I was sitting right there. I don't have any money on me now. I wrote right, something right, on right. my five pound note. Can I just step over to the side? Just, uh, we'll I'm sort this out. You. Don't worry, I'm sure this is going to misunderstand. To the Mark's relief, Alex quickly takes control of the situation. That's right, we'll sort this out. What's the, have... What are you talking about, So, How are you going to separate your money from theirs? What, what was it, five okay. pounds, ten pounds, twenty pounds? I had written something on one of them. I, I brought a phone number. Okay. 
No, I, had, I had a, st I had some, I had to have a your wallet, sir. Sorry. I had twenty. Alex asks for the Mark's wallets to see if they contain Paul's note that he claims to have written on. Right. Okay. I don't see any money in here. Do you have any other I money more, in your? I have more than that. Can I have a look at your cash? Alex is now in possession of a wallet full of credit cards and a hundred pounds in cash. See, that's the money that I had. All right. That Let's was the money that I had. Look, look, that's that's my phone hey, number. Hey, hey, sir, that's sir, my phone hey, number hey, written hey, on hey. there. All right, look, we're just going to sort this out. Can I ask you to stay, stand over here? But, and sir. And even though the banknote in question has appeared, Alex takes the other wallet just in case. Oh, Gentlemen, can I ask you to come with me? Well, can I hold can, the money, sir? Just stand over here until I come and deal with you. You're the same. The evidence seems to suggest that Paul is right. But with a few well-chosen words, Alex puts the marks at ease. I think this gentleman is quite well known around this area. Just step back inside, I'll come and get you, yeah? I just don't want him to be aggravated by... The marks happily sit themselves down in the cafe, pleased to be away from the uncomfortable situation. They now wait for friendly copper Alex to deal with the agitated man and return with their wallets. Oh, what are you saying? I'm saying that I really think this thing on my head itches. Okay. But they'll have a long wait. Because the policeman, the scruffy man and their wallets have disappeared around the corner and are gone for good. Oh. After spending ten minutes trying to get their heads round what's just happened, the marks start wondering where the policeman and the dodgy gentleman have got to. But just like their wallets, they're nowhere to be seen. So how did that banknote that Paul had written on end up in the Mark's pocket? When Paul paid for his cup of tea, he handed that note to the waitress, who placed it in the till. Then, when the Marks got up to pay, they received that note in change. Having identified his Marks, Paul texted Alex, who was waiting just around the corner. And everything's in place to pull off the coffee fix. I had uh, credit cards and stuff in my wallet and about £100 in cash. Uh, I just had a lot more driving licence, bank cards and stuff. So When I pulled my cash out, there was actually a phone number on that note. But now they're both gone. The victim in this case is hustled because they're too differential to authority. Along comes a policeman and says, you're accused of theft and you're immediately on the back foot. You just want out of this. A real police officer will want you to stay with your property. A scam artist will want to run away. We all enjoy a night on the town. And a good night becomes a great one when it doesn't cost a penny. Here's the challenge. The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. <laughs> so watch and learn. Jess is out in a Brighton bar to see if she can win some free drinks. Really? Can you juggle or anything like that? I can juggle. Can you do anything with a bottle? Well, can you juggle a bottle? Drink from a bottle? Well, how about I show you a trick with a bottle that can get you a free drink? Yeah. Okay. Take this bottle. Yeah. I've got the cap here and I've bent it in half. Okay. I want you to place the cap in the bottle. Then I want you to position the bottle wherever you want and however you want. And then, don't touch it. I want you to get the cap out of the bottle. Without touching Without it. Without touching it. And if you can do that, then I'll buy you whatever drink you want. And if I can do it, you buy me a drink. He has to place the cap inside the bottle. And then, after positioning it anywhere on the table, he has to get the cap out, but without touching the bottle. So I want to put that in the bottle. Yeah. You now need to place the bottle wherever you want on the table. Yeah. And now you have to get the cap out of the bottle without touching it. What are you thinking? Because you look confused. What are you actually thinking? I haven't got a clue what to do. You haven't got a clue what to do? I would have put it like... Ah, do it if you don't know. This is for him. <laughs> oh, I, want, I want someone to give me a clue. You're Don't not getting a clue? No. Okay. Oh, I just don't know what to do. Right, okay, I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay, can I just... I'm going to move you here. Okay. Just so I can use this part, okay? So, I'm going to place the cap into the bottle. Now, you saw me drop it, but I didn't say you had to drop it in. All I said was you had to place it in, okay? So, I'm placing it in. I'm going to rest it on the edge. 
Just like that. Okay, now I'm not touching it. Okay? 